This is the Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the number one Amazon bestseller, Make More Money Selling Your Art, proven techniques to turn your passion into profit. In the Marketing Minute, I try, don't always succeed, to answer your art marketing questions. Uh, and you can always email me your questions. I get a lot of these, but we try to get to all of them. Eric at plenairmagazine.com. This comes from Zach in San Diego. Love San Diego. Zach says, I like to use a combination of different types of paint, combining watercolor and acrylic, for example. Do you think this should affect my pricing in any way? Zach, I don't think anybody cares. Quite frankly, consumers typically don't think about that kind of stuff. Now, maybe if somebody's a really serious collector and you know they're a big oil painting person or a big watercolor painting person maybe or a big acrylic person but i don't think you know uh, galleries all the time sell paintings that are mixed media you know sometimes it's collage sometimes it's stuff glued on i just don't think it matters i don't think that people think about that stuff we tend as artists to overthink things most consumers buy paintings um, based on the painting, you know, they don't think about the life, the longevity, the archival quality of the paper, the medium, you know, they don't care about any of that stuff. What they care about is whether or not they like it. If it speaks to them, if they like it, then it becomes an issue of will they buy it? So the question then becomes, how do you put them over the edge? How do you help them buy it? Well, hopefully, you know, there's somebody who's helping you a gallery or somebody who's kind of selling for you or something like that. But I like to post uh, the story of the painting. I like to put the story beside the painting when it's hanging in the gallery. They don't always do it. I don't always provide it, but sometimes. And stories are, are memorable. Stories sell. Facts don't sell. Stories sell. Facts, logic, nobody cares. Give people a good story that they can tell other people. And if they like the story, if it resonates with them, it's going to make them feel the need to own it, maybe personalizes it a little bit, they can relate to the story, and then when it's hanging in their house, they're gonna tell their friends the story, not the facts. Next question comes from Nathan in Aspen, Colorado. I'm guessing Nathan is probably a ski bum. Just guessing, because Nathan says, I'm graduating from art school in the spring. I already have an Instagram account with lots of followers, but I post about my art and other things. Should I start a new account for my art or should I, could, could my account, my personal account just hurt my future sales in any way? Well, Nate, congratulations on your pending graduation. I love to catch people at this stage of their life, early stage of their career where they're fresh and new and able to start from fresh because you have the whole world in front of you and you can build a very successful and lasting career if you make the right steps early and keep that discipline. You know, you can become world famous in a very short period of time if you follow the right steps. So you're, you're getting a good start. You're asking the right questions. I usually don't say this, but I highly recommend that you read my book. It's about art marketing. Uh, they'll tell you about it later. But the, I think the book really outlines some really important basic principles that you should get. And there, there are also a lot of those principles are in my videos. But I think find a way to at least get the book. It'll cost you 25 or 29 bucks or something like that. Become a student of marketing and you will thrive. The greatest artists in the world, the ones who were known, the Rembrandts, they were great marketers. Rembrandt was a brilliant marketer. Picasso was the best marketer on earth. Whether or not you like his work, he sold a lot of it and became very, very, very successful, wealthy. So whether or not that's why you're doing it, you don't have to do it to become wealthy. Now, to your questions, is there a right or wrong answer? I, you know, I, I think that I'm kind of conflicted about this, Nate. Um, people like to get to know the person. They want to know a little bit about your art, if they're really interested in you as an artist. But, you know, in Instagram, I don't know about you, but I follow people based on what they are producing, you know, especially artists. So it's like, if there's an artist I love, I really want to see his or her work. I don't really care about what they're doing with their life. Now, if I know them, I care. Uh, and maybe that's part of helping people get to know you. 
But the thing you want to avoid are things that are polarizing, unless that's the image you're trying to project, but that can be dangerous. I have a friend who's an art gallery owner, and she actually fired an artist because of something he put on Instagram or Facebook uh, because she heard from a collector of that artist's work who wanted to return the work because she was repulsed by something they put on social media. Well, she had, to t she had to take the painting back. I mean, what else could she do? She refunded the money, and then she fired the artist. And she said, I can't have this kind of behavior from, from you. You're, you know, you're a professional. You're supposed to be a professional. You're supposed to act like a professional. So keep that in mind. You can hurt yourself. You know, if, if I always say if you're showing pictures of yourself with your head in the toilet after a, a strong night of partying, that's probably not something some collectors are going to want to see. You know, again, maybe it reinforces your image if that's your image. But I think that, you know, I'd rather not risk it. Uh, I, I kind of like to walk a line. You know, you'll never hear me talk about politics or religion or, you know, things that are going to turn a lot of people off. I mean, I might say it personally to somebody, but usually not even then. I just try to stay away from those kind of polarizing things. And you know, some people don't care about that. Others do. I have friends who, who just cannot contain their political opinions, and they turn some people off, and those people will never buy their artwork. And, and they don't understand why that, you know, it crosses that barrier, but it just irritates some people. So just be careful about that. By the way, Nathan, don't ever let, get dis let discouragement get in your way. The people you hang out with are going to have lots of opinions. If you're hanging out with a lot of other artists, some are going to complain all the time about how bad things are, how they're not selling work. Others are going to tell you how, um, how things are not going the way they want them to. Uh, you know, be careful about surrounding yourself with negativity. You want to listen to people. You want to respect them. But uh, surround yourself with people who are positive. I, it, it's a great example. I just heard from somebody who was telling me how awful things were in a particular town. Uh, and then I was with a dealer from that particular town who told me he just had the best year in his business. So, you know, what makes the difference there? I don't know. But, you know, what, when things are up somewhere, they're down somewhere else. But always, you can always find out where they're up and you can always go into that area, into that market, into wherever things are going well. So just keep that in mind. Also, you didn't ask, but since you're soon to be fresh out of school, a couple other pieces of advice. There's a lot of recent evidence that the promise of social media as an ad medium isn't always effective. It is effective, don't get me wrong. Procter & Gamble just removed $150 million from Facebook and Instagram because they found out it was not increasing their sales and they put the money, started putting the money back into traditional media and they're already seeing increases in sales. We have a tendency to believe because something is new and shiny and hot that it's going to it's going to succeed. You know, you want to go where the money is. I always say stand in the river where the money is flowing. And so be thinking about other things. For instance, there are uh, the people who you hang out with might all be social media junkies. I know I am. But you also have to understand that not everybody who buys is a social media junkie or is going to follow you. And that might not be effective. Also remember this. All decisions are emotional. When it comes to selling anything, all decisions are emotional. That may not apply to toilet paper, but even then, you know, it probably does because it's like somebody wants the stuff with aloe in it because they think it makes it a better experience. Experiences are emotional. But all emotions are, 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 are all, all decisions are emotional, but they're justified with logic. So you can sell by facts and logic, but you'll lose almost every time when you sell by facts and logic. We don't buy a car because it's practical. We buy a car because it speaks to us. It speaks to our emotions. It speaks to who we are. You know, the color, the style, we buy things based on who we are. We try to get something that matches us. We might rationalize it or justify it with gas mileage or some other such thing. So keep this in mind. Social, pe social media has people focusing on fact-based selling and data and that's okay, and it works in some instances, but always think about um, why people buy and how you can appeal to them. I mean, you know, uh, for instance, uh, you know, a full-page ad in a magazine that's going to all the prominent art buyers, 
um, they can really see that ad. You know, there's a lot of difference in that space behind, between, you know, what they're seeing on a phone. And, you know, if they're all gathered in one place, this is a better place, to, not necessarily better, but it's a place to sell them. And you might want to think about that kind of thing. But sell with emotion. Learn how to sell with emotion. Uh, practical and logical stuff typically don't work. And even with people who are in positions that are practical, like lawyers or accountants or doctors or otherwise, most of those decisions are still practical. So I hope this helps. That's the Marketing Minute. This has been the Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes. You can learn more at artmarketing.com.